what is going on people i'm back with my favorite type of video we're going to be discussing the ou tier today the disgusting ou tier look at this 32 percent rillaboom what are you talk bro did cinder ace even have 32 percent you might as well just ban this thing too but guys we're here today we're going to talk about uh the august usage stats and uh the tier shifts some mons dropped down to uu i think some came up from o uh from uu to ou and some dropped down and just yeah the tier has been pretty different lately you know, we had the Magirna and Cinder Ace ban. Uh, there was discussion about banning Urshifu, stuff like that. But, you know, um, it's interesting now. Like, the metagame has really changed. It's pretty whack. You can see Blissey at number 13 and all this different stuff. So I was like, let's just discuss it. So, of course, I got all my important tabs open, baby. I got the tier changes. Well, this is, like, unimportant. We're only really looking at the OU ones. Um, I got this, the uh, the OU stats here, because you know we we gotta know everything. I don't I don't just want to know the top forty. I, in fact, perhaps I'd like to know, and perhaps I'd like to know the other guys' usage as well. But no, um, I like that they have the percentage uses here. So yeah, I got everything, and then I got the viability ranks as well, and then I got my team builder as well because we are gonna be we're gonna be diving into this, bro. The meta game is gross right now. I'm not lying. Like I think the meta game sucks right now, which is tough because. Uh, I usually always try to find the, the positives in the metagame. I know I'd be whining in the game, but even CTC was like, you'd be complaining like a bitch lately. I was like, man, it's all use fault then. Nah, but anyway, um, I was like, okay, let me look through this tier because I really enjoyed it back in June. So I was thinking, hmm, what's what's going on? So this is the viability. This is whatever. I guess for now, we'll just look at the, the, the usage. So Clef, 37%, very solidly number one. If I go through my teams, like a lot of them have Clef. It's just too easy to run uh support clefable um and it has so many good sets like for example in this team i was spamming a lot on stream this one's calm mind life orb and then you know i have uh the one on this team is what again uh stealth rock trick a very common set or stealth rock uh thunder wave stealth rock knockoff this one again wish teleport that's the classic right you wish and then you teleport into your big ass threat and there's nothing you can do a lot of the time versus this like it makes sense that Clefable has this uh, this dirty 37% usage because all of its sets are just too good. Yeah, you can go to stuff like Volcarona to set up on it, but the, the most annoying cleft for me is running into the Trick Sticky Barb one because getting a, a Mon Sticky Barbed, which unless it's like your own cleft, so then you're not affected. If one of your Mons gets Sticky Barbed, it's such a problem because you're on a timer then. Like you are dying. It, it's very tough. Um, and Wish Teleport again is so easy because Clefable walls so many different Mons. Um, so I'm not surprised at this thing being at 37%, like, it's kind of fucked up how dominating this thing's usage is, um, like, all the time, like, dude, it's like, it's just too good, I can't believe Wish Teleport and became so powerful and people started using Trick Sticky Bar, which again, is, you guys know, if you've played on the ladder, it's such a menace, but they put Pex as number 2 in the S rank, but 7th here, but we'll talk about that after. Rillaboom 32. Now, this is outlandish. This is completely outlandish. I just, like, I didn't even know what to think. I wanted to look at this just to see what mods I'm going to have to pay attention to. Okay. Basic. Oh, wow. Some of these drop, too. Whatever. Um, Rillaboom at 32% is disgusting. I know Rillaboom is, like, the GOAT, but it's, like, what did they rank? A rank. It's not even ranked in A plus rank. Yeah, I don't know how it has 32% usage. Maybe it's just hype or something. It has to be like hype or I mean it's good. It's 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 good, but it's not 32% good. Like I can't I can't understand it. Like there there are counters to this thing or pe maybe people are just not running them. Um it's definitely annoying and it can sweep your team, but I don't know, maybe all my teams have like Skarmory and Tangro these days, so I'm like not as worried. Um but no, SD Rillaboom is like the most annoying sweeper in the game. It's also just like cheap. Like, I hate Rillaboom. I think it's cheap because it's like, it takes no skill. I hate mons like that. No skill to sweep with this shit. You just SD. It has the natural bulk to lift most attacks. And then you just grassy glide, which one hit KOs every resist, which is so stupid. But whatever. I can't wait for Tapu Bulu and Kartana to come and just obliterate this metagame one by one. All together, when you put them all together. Anybody who uses Tapu Bulu, Kartana, Halucha, any combination, like Coco, Raichu, Lucha, automatically banned from the agency, has no no association whatsoever. All that shit is going to be overpowered. But anyway, guys, Rillaboom at 32.61%. That's major. Um, I really did not think that uh, a mon like, like that mon would have so much usage, but it does. I mean, if we look at it in the viability ranks... Um, it can muscle past most stuff after an SD. It can't muscle past Volk. 
um i mean unless you're faster and plus two knockoff kills it and it's defensive but um yeah but it can muscle pass everything else Corv you can blow away with plus two superpower or knock off if it's weakened dragapult will die to plus two grassy glide if you chip it with rocks all the other guys if you don't resist if you don't resist grass you already know what happens to you versus rillaboom like you guys already know that if you don't resist grass you have no chance versus rillaboom kiram why is this thing the only one that doesn't have a hyperlink either way uh kiram i remember my plus four life for rillaboom killed it with grassy glide which is insane yeah it's plus four but kiram is kiram has like 400 hp and resists grassy glide but yeah everything here gets wet up mandibuzz is a pretty decent counter um going to your own rillaboom yeah if you're faster with u-turn but you gotta be careful uh Kamo is pretty decent um yeah but dude it's it's true it's true with the simple swords dance life orb uh grassy glide superpower knockoff and then sometimes we'll run high horsepower or whatever bullshit that thing is a really 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 big threat really really big threat and yeah i'm 32 percent is still stupid it doesn't really make sense to me but it's a very easy mod to throw on your team and get a lot of mileage out of so yeah, it's like the easiest thing to do. People, you know what else is easy to do, people? It's easy to go and download the Brave browser today. What a transition. Oh, people, go check this out. I want to appreciate all of you and thank all of you who have been using this, especially in these times when everything helps. And trust me, when you guys use this with my referral code, <laughs> brave.com slash BLU441, and you use the browser for 30 days, it really does help me. And I truly appreciate that. So if you guys want to help me for free, go download the browser. It's a great browser. And again, like I said, it's completely free and they'll pay you as well as me so appreciate y'all go check that out if you're interested back to it the link for that will be in the description but okay so we're past rillaboom now so clef and rillaboom taking over interesting that rillaboom's at 32.61 percent usage while uh the rest of this shit is like uh i mean there's so much shit above it i guess but yeah dragapult at 28 percent. yeah this thing is so good there's like never a reason not to run this um it's hard for me to find out what my favorite set is right now because they're all so good this one is scarf which i haven't used in a while but this team is pretty good um and then i run a lot of specs a lot of will-o-wisp u-turn hex heavy duty boots is a very very good set um that i was using on the diggersby team i believe yeah so this one was a hex thunder Wave set and then i obviously had the hex will-o-wisp set but yeah i find that uh i find that what's it called dragapult it's just one of the most perfect mods to have on your team. It's bulky enough to live most hits uh, that are neutral, which I like. It can it can hit it can take like one neutral hit. It's not I mean obviously super effective hit will usually fry it, but the support it can do is too good. The speed is great. It's still the fastest guy besides Zero Aura. Um, dude, I don't even care either. I'll be running modest on like 70% of my Dragapults too. I'll be coming in with 383 speed and then getting forced out by their Dragapults. But a lot of people run that as well. But yeah, the support Dragapult allows is really, really good. I love the fact that it has access to those two status moves plus Hex. It becomes a very hard mod to beat once you start uh, statusing things. It can basically break on its own, which I think is awesome. I love running it with Wish support from Clefable too, because then it allows you to play a little more risky with your Dragapult. lets you throw out Wisps and stuff, take the hits. Normally, if you don't have Wish Pass, I find it pretty hard to just throw those Wisps and stuff around. Um, but yeah, this shit is fire. Dragapult's one of the goats. Not even surprised. I'd honestly put it in S rank. I mean, it's not as good as Clef and Pex. It's not as good as either of them. Um, but I just feel like it's better than everything else in A plus rank. So I wish there was a way to distinguish it between like, I wish these two were an S plus and Dragapult was an S and then everything else was an A because the support Dragapult brings is just too good. Like it's just the moves it has, the support it brings to your team, the shit it can patch up, like its flaws are so easy to uh mitigate because what it like the the pros it brings are disgusting so yeah dragapult I, I appreciate that thing still staying in top three zero aura number four dude i thought this thing would fall off with the rise of grass types like tangrowth and uh amoongus and even rillaboom but no dude this shit got more usage incredible incredible so we're nearing 27 percent usage with zero aura which is nuts um yeah dude like i don't understand really like i mean i do get it it's really really good in this current meta um I, like everybody runs grass not these days too so they are able to check hippo which is 12th in usage which is gross but yeah it's pretty hard to be i mean it's hard to like straight up wall zero aura but like you can still switch around it so i mean it has the same problems it always had i think the blaze kick set is really hard to beat um i like that set the blaze kick shit that's pretty tough to beat um and then you play some people who run vol switch and stuff but like 
I mean, in general, it's just hard to switch into zero or right? Nothing really wants to take a knockoff. The best thing to switch into knockoff is like Clefable, who then will lose the leftovers, and then Plasma Fist could take you out. Um, but Clef is pretty good at walling zero or for the most part if it's not life orb. But even if it's life orb, you can life orb stall it with Wish Protect. Uh, so yeah, I mean, that's my beef with zero or like Clef beats it. So yeah, I mean, I've seen some specs ones that are threats. I feel like Bandit Zero is a decent threat, but you want to run Grass Knot like all the time. Heavy Duty Boots is definitely the most annoying zero or I've ran into. Um, but yeah, this thing is this thing is a threat for sure. I'm trying to think like the teams I use it on. I feel like I only have it on uh, a couple. So this one's heavy duty boots. Yeah. So this one's heavy duty boots with Vol Switch. Uh, classic for attack type shit. Um, and then this one's Life Orb uh, mixed, which is pretty cool. With Grassy Knot, Rillaboom. You guys have seen the. I mean, Grassy uh, Terrain, Rillaboom to uh, power up Grass Knot. You guys have definitely seen this team if you've been on the ladder. I don't know who made it, but um. Uh, my boy Solwyn passed it to me, but yeah, this is a great set, all-out attacker. Blaze Kick is something my boy, uh, I don't know, who, I think Storm Zone? I think he, he, he's the one who definitely, like, created that shit. Uh, yeah, the Blaze Kick. So this set was also really good for me, too. I had, a, I had a lot of success with this one as well. Um, Blaze Kick is very, very nice for, like, nearly one hit killing Ferrothorn, and you're able to destroy Rillaboom, Amoongus, uh, that likely think that they're able to like take any hit from you and do something in return so yeah zero aura has a lot of viability a lot of different things it can run so i understand why it's it's similar to dragapult in that regard but it's not as good as dragapult in that regard even if it's faster um i prefer dragapult yeah extra drill at 24 percent yeah dude that was pretty crazy to me too i feel like uh i didn't expect this thing to be so high in usage i mean it's it's good i have a lot of teams with it no doubt but yeah i mean the sets i've been using are mainly defensive or the sand one i haven't used sash too often i like lead mew more than i like lead excadrill lately uh but yeah this thing is doing the same thing it's always done it's just good at putting up rocks it's like the goat at putting up rocks and then it's good if you're running a sand team and everyone and their mom runs hippo right now and even titar has gone back up in usage a little bit um so it's easy to throw on sand drill the other good thing about drill is that drill well first of all drill is like one of the best ho leads right i honestly think lycan rock is like better but um whatever actually do i i mean they have their pros and cons i just like the speed of lycan rock and taunt i think Drudagon is the worst one to run into because that shit cannot be one hit ko'd and so it's always getting up its rocks i hate running into Drudagon. i feel like that shit is the number one guy that gets up rocks versus everybody like the extra drill those are so easy to outplay and uh get the rocks like uh, up against and stop them from getting rocks. But if you go against a a Dragon, that's just living specs Draco Meteor from like four high Dragons. Like I hate that shit. Lives everything. But anyway, anyway, he's not of no use. We don't gotta worry about him. You only gotta worry about him by those random like high ladder teams. Um, but yeah, drill, uh, drill and sand is probably one of the best uh, hyper offense countermeasures too. I mean, kind of. There's so much priority on hyper offense nowadays. And like a boom and shit but um i mean drill matches are pretty well versus the top 10 as you can see um it's able to hit them all pretty decently so nothing has really changed for extra drill the spadef set is good too people love that i love that I, i'm moving on from drill it just does the same thing that's always done uh yeah urshifu so this is the dark type one yeah this one is pretty crazy um he'd be putting in work for real I remember people thought it was broken at first. Even I wasn't sure if it was broken or if it was going to get banned. I thought it, I was like, maybe it'll get banned. Um, but no, this thing has uh, it's come back down to earth. I guess I was running this set. I ran a lot of bulk up, Wicked Blow, Sucker Punch, and then Poison Jab last. The set that gets walled by other Urshifu. But you need Poison Jab to hit uh, fairies. Either way, you can run this. You can run Bandit. You can run Scarf. You guys know the drill at this point with Urshifu. It's just a nice mod to have. It hits extremely hard. Um, nothing really switches into Bandit Wicked Blow coverage because it's able to 2 KO Helmet Tangrowth. And it's able to 2 it KO uh, Pex. So the only thing that's really good is Clef. And you can always Iron Head that thing. So yeah, a well-played Urshifu always should be able to put in some good work. Get some very massive hits off. Um... But I don't think it's broken anymore. I think it's a, it's pretty easy to switch around. Um, yeah, I think the most scary sets are the ones where they're not choiced, personally. Well, no, that actually very much depends. If I'm running a defensive team, then I... Like, if I have a Tangrowth, I love when they're running, like, Life Orb. 
because then they're just gonna kill themselves with helmet and life orb and i just recover it all back with regen plus giga drain but if they're banded it could get worse um because uh but the thing is physical attackers stay losing because uh they have to deal with rocky helmet and what's it called they don't run knockoff on uh or sheaf i don't even think it gets knockoff or whatever um, so you can't knock off the helmet one time and plus that's like such a waste of time if you have banded wicked blow you'd rather go for that than some like sissy ass knockoff which is like not going to do enough and it's just like removing the item for what in the future like you know what i mean it's not it's not worth it again i don't even know think it gets knocked off but who give let me just find out let me find out if that shit gets knocked off i doubt it though i feel like someone would run that garbage yeah okay i just had to make sure people you know fact check type shit all right but yeah uh urshifu was pretty good at like checking some stuff i like it versus some uh some stuff like aegis slash it can shut it down but this thing spadef is dog shit um which is pretty bad like it dies to draco's at 100 every time which is annoying it dies to every special move under the sun it's not bulky it's it's bulky enough physically but especially it's so terribly not bulky um yeah it's not like even like physically it's not that bulky either um actually no that's a lot it is actually pretty deep like you can switch it into like extra or earthquake and shit um and it can tank a real boom hit not plus two obviously but yeah and i guess it has access to sucker punch it's cool being at number six but like it's definitely not as good as i thought it was like last month or two months ago so i'm not that big on it anymore it's just whatever um it's still great but uh i don't think it's broken at all i don't care about it even getting suspect tested because it's not it, it's it's calmed down it's totally it's totally like calmed down people don't fuck with this mon as much anymore pex at number seven okay so pex at number seven 21 percent usage despite being in the s rank tier along cyclophable so considered the top two mons maybe i should just delete this because who gives a fuck we'll just talk about this right now because i'm so tired of always switching to this you be able to owe you okay cheap cheese mons that only are used to the 60 specific styles you to owe you okay anti-rocks cheap kiram is back and then necrozma because they just want a rocker and then Skarm is back, which makes sense. Tux just... Whatever. I'll just talk about that shit when it's time to talk about that. I don't need this anymore. You feel me? Oh, this is a meme I had open that someone posted on a thread. This is hilarious. When this card is activated, pick as many underused Pokemon as you want and add them to overused. Your opponent cannot activate a card in response. That's so funny because it's facts. When OLT starts up, they just have everybody adding whatever UU garbage they want to uh, the tier. But Pex is number seven. Yeah, Pex is like the GOAT right now. I'll be running Pex on Hello Teams. I can't even lie. I'll be running a lot of different... Uh, sets this one's just the haze knockoff classic i think all pecs needs knockoff right now every single pecs i think has knockoff right now like it's very rare to see one without it um and then haze is really really good as well but a lot of them don't have haze i run a lot without haze as well because i want toxic or baneful bunker yeah pecs does what it always does it just annoys teams um t spike set is still very annoying too but it's on the bit on the decline but t spikes is really nice because again um t spikes forces people to go to their spinner or defogger or forces in their own pecs so it's pretty nice but we're skipping past Pex because it just does what it always does. It walls everything. It's very good right now. I would say, I, I actually agree with it being an S with Clef. I think it's better than all this shit. It walls everything. It can handle everything. Um, and it's not even an exaggeration because I didn't even think Pex was good back in Gen 7. And I didn't even think Pex was that great a couple months ago. But it's, too, it's so fucking good right now. So whatever. Volk at number 8. Yeah, this is a toss-up. Sometimes this thing is like, oh no. And then sometimes it's fine. And then sometimes like you have the counter you think and it's primarina but then the volk has giga drain only for primarina and you lose and you're like damn it um but then you're using volcarona and you run into the max Pedef rock slide hippo that everyone and their fucking grandma uses and you go for plus one fire blast you 55 60 percent and the rock slide does 100 percent and you die i'm telling you i'm telling you it can be frustrating when volcarona doesn't get that kill but volk can be the auto 60 sometimes um like look if you if you ran if you ran into this top 10 team and they had all nine mons and you had a volk you'd still sweep all nine after one quiver dance right that's pretty funny so yeah volk obviously uh can do that the safeguard cheese set is pretty nice for six owing stall but like it's ass because if you run into haze packs you lose so um and i mean they're all haze for the most part on ladder except for like mine because i like losing but yeah i don't know volk is still great though quiver dance psychic fire blast is very very strong it's a very good mid game breaker or late game sweeper no matter which way you want to cut it and it's insane on hyper offense teams all around and it has a uh, defensive utility as well like I, I won't sleep on that like the defensive set is able to check rillaboom quite well um it also threatens with flame body it's just nice it stops shit from in my opinion it stops shit from like zero aura and rillaboom from throwing out their attacks 24 7 
Um, it's a good check versus stuff like Scizor that you see on these HO teams. Uh, I can switch into Kiram Ice Beams, and it can even check stuff like Hatterene quite nicely. So Volk has the bulk, especially with Boots. So I understand. I feel like we've really got to see Volk's defensive capabilities shine uh, because of the fact that it got Boots, and it can't get affected by all this bullshit now. And we've always known that Volk had pretty decent uh, defenses, but now it's like... It's quite nice. It's quite nice. Like, this is, the def well, this is the safeguard one, but yeah. It's very easy to switch this thing into different mons and just eat up the hit. I have a offensive Volk team, on, I feel like. Yeah. Well, this is like a weird set, but whatever. Yeah, but I understand Volk being where it is. I, I understand it being an A-plus rank, too. A lot of times, I feel like I don't even got to sit up with Volk. It's hard to find the best set, but I do like Psychic a lot just because I hate pecs. So, yeah. Togekiss at number 9. I hate that this piece of shit is at number 9. You only use this mon if you want to terrorize the ladder. It's cheap and it's annoying, but it is what it is, and it's very good at getting rid of bullshit. Uh, I'd be, be seeing Scarf the most, I feel like, on ladder. People love just stapling it on their Hyper Offense team as like, oh shit, I misplayed, but luckily I have Togekiss. Uh, I'm trying to see which Togekiss teams I have. This one's Scarf, I think. Yeah. Oh no, no, this one's Heavy Duty Boots, Air Slash, Roost, Nasty Ply, Heal Bow. I have this team where it's Thunder Wave, Defog, Heavy Duty Boots. I like the defensive one a decent amount. Um, I definitely have a team with Scarf, though. This one's Scarf, I think. Yeah, and then this is Scarf. This one's weird. It's like an air slash nasty plot trick, but I guess it's meant to like sort of take on HO and stall at the same time. Nasty plot Togus is very good at taking out the defensive team still, though. I will say that. Very, very difficult to defeat. Um, and Scarf is still a menace. Scarf is still a menace. Don't sleep. Don't sleep. Like, you guys know Scarf is a menace. Especially because look at these teams. When that Clef stick, uh, tricks one of your mons a sticky barb, and then it knocks off two other ones, and you don't got leftovers on anything, go to that steel type. That that Togus is getting rid of it in four air slashes. Like, it's it's crazy. So, yeah, I understand Togus being there. Very annoying. Able to check a lot of stuff. You either run heavy duty boots or Scarf, and you call it a day. So, it's a good mon. Core at number 10. So I guess all Corvs are like defensive. Corv is falling off in my book. It's like not that good anymore. It's hella good on stall. It's like a must have on stall because it's able to destroy all the stealth rockers and PP stall them infinitely, um, which is invaluable. So I think on stall, Corv is like insanely hard to defeat when you play against the stall with Corv and they play it well because the PP management game becomes very, very hard. Uh, because they can just sacrifice their core for the sole reason of defogging every single time. On balanced teams, oftentimes they're going to need their Corviknight to fulfill some defensive role, and it's just not going to work. Like, versus this team, if I had a Corv, it would suck, because it would get overpressured. It would get plus two knockoff killed, or it would get just fucked up by Rillaboom or something. Well, this is banded Rillaboom, so I guess I could beat it. Um, but, like, SD Rillaboom, for example, plus two knockoff is probably gone. Like, there's the, so that's what I'm saying. The defensive Rillaboom is tough. I mean, defensive Corviknight's tough. It does do some stuff like check Excadrill. Um, and it, it can check Rillaboom, obviously, too. But I don't know. It's tough. Corviknight, it's, it's not as good to me as it once was. Um, and it looks like that for a lot of people, seeing as it's at number 10. I mean, number 10 is still fantastic. But where is it here? What do they have Corv on the rankings? A+. plus. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's falling off a little bit for me. But it's still like an amazing mon. Also, I've seen a lot of Magnazones, which has turned me off to using Corv a little bit more, but whatever. All right, Mandibuzz at number 11. So this guy's been kicked out of the top 10. Um, I know he was in the top 10 at one point. I don't know if he was in there last month, but yeah, I mean, he's still good at what he does. He still defogs pretty well. I think everybody runs Toxic on like every Mon now, uh, which has annoyed Mandibuzz a lot and stopped it from like cock blocking all the hazard setters. Like Pex will knock off its heavy duty boots and Toxic it. Hippo will Toxic it. I even see other mandibuzz with toxic so mandibuzz doesn't get those free knockoffs it used to really get anymore like everything runs toxic now or it'll have to take a knockoff so it has to think about that but again it's the same thing as corviknight like it just removes the hazards and you turns out there's like nothing else for it to do it's good at what it does it's good at what it does but like i don't know it's not that appealing to use mandibuzz right now i'm trying to see where my mandibuzz teams are yeah only my oldest teams this italian bullshit team and this has brave bird on it too for urshifu this is old but I mean, it's still great. It's still great. A foul play is still a great tech. It's able to check a lot of stuff. I'll never hate on Mandibuzz at all. U-turn is one of the best things for a support mon to have. But I just understand why right now it's it's going down in usage. Because the stuff at the top just sort of makes Mandibuzz's life hell. Hippo at number 12. Okay, this guy is like the number one rocker. Everybody everybody wants to run this. Um, I'll be running teams with it too. It's just like, it's just an easy mon to throw on. It walls a lot of stuff. But it's, uh, eh. It's pretty boring to use. I run I run Spadef. I think Spadef's the best set for sure. It lets you put up rocks way easier on stuff. But physically defensive definitely has its perks as well. It's just easier to match it up with like a Skarm or some shit so that you don't have to worry about Excadros. 
Blissia number 13, great. Just put these two fat pieces of shit next to each other. So Blissia is taking over, man. Number 13 is nothing to fuck around with. That's high usage. Let me go to the... That's 13% usage. Damn. So he's really getting used. A rank. So Blissia, if you guys don't know, it uses... Uh, what's it called? Heavy duty boots. This is a set CTC gave me. I mean, some people run heal bow. Some people run other shit. But CTC gave me a set with teleport. I think this is like the most common set though. I'm pretty sure. Um, so CTC gave me this. But yeah, Blissey is a tough mod to kill, man. It's really tough with heavy duty boots. They will come in and out quite easily uh, and teleport out to give you any type of initiative. I really like it with Hatterene because Blissey seems to attract a lot of uh, defensive mons, um, Ferrothorn, shit like that. And then Hatterene's able to come in and take advantage of that. So I like that core a lot. But dude, Blissey is, is really annoying as a teleporter. It's basically like Clef to me. Like It's like the same shit. It's just, more, it's just better on stall. But number 13 is really high usage. It's kind of crazy. I didn't expect it to be that high. Um, I don't know what people are running. Either Thunder Wave or Toxic. It does cock block Dragapult, which is pretty nice. Um, but you got to keep your heavy duty boots. It is very hard to defeat, though, when it has heavy duty boots on. I can't lie, so I understand the usage. Crawl on F14. This brings a smile to my face. Crawl on F14 is outlandish. I didn't expect this thing to, uh, to have such high usage. 14 is, like, insane. Like, that's better than a lot of OU mods. Um... So that's lit. Proud of Crowdon for doing this. Um, I wonder what it's ranked here. See, B, B plus. Look at it's with some piles of shit like Reuniclus. Like crazy. Um, yeah, I don't know. I feel like this is mainly due to that one offense team with Crowdon. Not this one. The uh, the Necrozma one. Whoever made that shit. Well, not this one. Where's Necro? Yeah, dude. I feel like this one I saw I saw this card all over the place. But yeah, Life Orb and Bandit are both fantastic sets. Uh, you never really have anything to worry about. The priority's good. The knockoff's good. It's able to completely shred this Clefable Toxapex bullshit that's taken over the ladder. You can't just switch in your you can't just switch in your Tangrowth Amoongus Rillaboom mindlessly into this water type either, because it'll kill it with knockoff. So I really like Crowdon. It's always been one of the best mons, but if you can get yourself into that position to get off the free attack, it's over. It's over. Like, look at this guy's team. If we got Crowdon in on a uh, Excadrill or on Volk, forced to 50-50, obviously. We got it in on Pex, got it on Corviknight. Put yourself in a good position to get a kill. So, this thing's always been good. Don't have to really explain too much. The priority's great. It's a it's a great breaker. If you're having problems with a lot of annoying mons like Hippo Blissey, just throw on a Crowdon and just click the right move, bro. And just It's it's a satisfying feeling. Ferrothorn at 15th, one of my favorite status, uh, I mean not status, uh, hazard setters, it's very solid at what it does, uh, spikes, leech seed, power with body press, you're gonna see a lot of body press these days just because they feel the need to always be able to hit Bisharp, which I understand, and also just hit other Ferrothorns, body press is just a good coverage, and of course, Magnezone, um, I've seen most of them run knockoff, I guess this guy's running power whip probably for what, maybe Primarina or something, it doesn't really matter, um, you can run whatever. But you, you basically do need body press. It's just good at setting up the layers. It's good at pissing off stuff like Corviknight and Mandibus because it can leech seed and knock those things off. Even apply pressure with body press because they have to roost on it. Um, but yeah, Ferrothorn just does what it classically does. Only thing I don't like about Ferrothorn is that it gets set up on by everything. Cleft Calm Mind's up on it, makes it its bitch. Rillaboom can set up on it. Falk or Shifu, Togekiss. Because they don't really run Gyro Ball for Tog. Um, if you're running Gyro Ball, it's pretty good. I know Suave has a team with Gyro Ball. I think that's a pretty underrated tech right now gyro ball because people be going into clefts rilla booms all that stuff and then you know you want to get that hit but yeah fair throwing solid scissor at number 16 i have a more appreciation for scissor recently i thought it was dog shit when it first dropped but now i kind of like it but i still think it's bad um so i guess i don't really like it this is the set i've been running life orb i haven't really run bug bite i think i usually run uh superpower or something like that um do i run what is the other set is it quick attack what's the one on the uh this team oh it's sand tomb that's some whack shit um that shit is ass but yeah scissor is pretty decent it's just very very strong and it's bulky enough to take most hits i just like priority so i'll give scissor the pass at being a 16th it can be pretty threatening it just depends on what set you have most of the time but the fact that it can threaten out stuff like clef tank a hit from rillaboom scare out togekiss etc it's it's pretty nice so I can't, I can't really say too much bad about it. Like, and plus, even look at the mons on eleven to fifteen. Like, you can, if you get a plus two scissor, you're able to at least chip these to a decent amount. So I'm not worried. A zoom roll at seventeen. I don't get the hype with this mod. I think that shit's ass. Um, I think it never sweeps. Someone's gonna pull up a video of me getting swept by one, but whatever. The point is, I don't think it sweeps enough. Um, 
it's like it's just it's just too easy like it's not even uh hard to get a belly jump off with a zoom roll i'm not even saying like it's like every mon stops from getting a belly, a belly jump up i would actually say it's quite easy but when rillaboom has 32 percent usage i don't understand the point of using this thing dragapult has 28 percent usage so that thing is going to live in willow spew um yeah you can take care of the other things with aqua jet but just in general i don't find it to be a, like a, a easy time for a zoom roll and again that 33 percent of rillaboom is like that is like the thing to me that's like why the fuck would i use uh a zoom roll like you can look at some of these teams and be like oh a zoom roll might go in not really though i mean it might be good for some of these teams like the chandelier conk team will get owned by it for example um but yeah i don't like it as a water type i think primarina is way better as a setup water type magna zone at 18th i only like specs zone i don't like scarf i don't like sub body press i don't like any of that shit i think sub body press is hella bad um it's cool for killing ferrothorn because you do get the job done um, and it's insane for stall. I think you murder stalls if they don't have hippo with that. Because you take out their, uh, their, uh, what's it called? Blissey. And then they're like, fuck, what do I do? My pecs can't stall at these thunderbolts. Yeah, so sub body press, iron defense or whatever can go crazy. Um, or whatever the set is. Maybe it's just straight up body press. I don't even know if it's sub body press. But yeah, that, that shit can go crazy for stall. But specs is my favorite easily. I feel like it always puts in a decent amount of work. It's very good versus some of these blissy stalls that don't even run a ground type, which is awful. And then you just full switch on them five times a win. The My favorite Magnezone team is probably the one with Weavile that I got. Where is that one? This one, yeah, I like this core a lot. The SD Weavile plus Specs Magnezone because it gets rid of all its counters. Thunder Wave in the last slot has helped me, but you can run either Toxic Flash Cannon, Tri Attack, or Hyper Beam. Or, no, we already have Flash Cannon. Try attack hyper beam or toxic or whatever the case is. Um, but yeah, so now they start having like 9% usage. But Scissor with 10% usage and Crawdon with 12% is pretty nice. Blissey with 13 is wag. Kumo at 19th. Classic Stealth Rock. Uh, I don't think the other sets are good. I'm just going to leave it at that. Like, I don't think the offensive sets are that good. When Clef has 37% usage. Belly Jump could be a threat, but it's like not really. But Stealth Rock is still decent. Kind of checks Rillaboom, kind of checks her Shifu. It's just one of those mods I don't like without Wish support. Because it doesn't have a recovery move. Alright, moving on. Lucha. You only see this guy with Rillaboom nowadays. Um, on those types of HOs. I mean, it like makes sense. It needs to take advantage of terrain. What Lucha teams do I have? Let's see. I have this Psychic Terrain team. I have... Oh, I don't really be using Halucha like that. Yeah, Halucha's good, but it's not that good. It still has trouble sweeping. It can sweep these HO teams pretty easily. I think people play Halucha pretty bad. I think it's actually really, really good at late game sweeping most teams. But again, that 37% Clefable will be tough to get past. And it's pretty frail. Like, all over the place. It's super frail. Kiram 21. So I've seen a couple of different Kiram sets. I've seen that Freeze Dry plus Icicle Spear set, which is meant to have, like, infinite PP with metronome and take care of stall and it does a pretty damn good job of it i've seen dragon dance which uh is pretty good as well i don't like dragon dance that much because of pecs but i think you can even out stall pecs because of pressure it's crazy um and then i think specs is obviously amazing like all the time specs is, uh, is like look at the look at the top 10 you get blown away by specs you gotta switch vulk into the ice move otherwise uh someone's getting blown away so i think that's nice kiram still gets stopped by a lot of stuff like blissey which again is on every team nowadays so it's kind of tough but I like it. I like the Icicle Spear Freeze Dry set quite a bit. I haven't used it in recent uh, time, but when I did use it like a month ago, it was pretty great. So, Kiram will always be one of those mods that's pretty solid. It has the bulk too to scare out stuff like Rillaboom. Um, so, yeah. And like Togekiss, shit like that. Amoongus at 22. I have been more familiar with Amoongus lately. It's good. Good at getting off a sport. Good at tanking every physical hit at least once. Um, can check Rillaboom quite nicely. Uh, yeah, I don't got much to say besides that. It's hella good at getting off a spore or a stun spore or just checking like the zero aura, the Rillabooms, even the drills. I like putting a helmet on it because with Regenerator, you basically get a free attack off on something. Or not free attack, but you get free chip. So yeah. Rotom Heat 23. Favorite part about Rotom Heat is that it's still the best way to deal with Volcarona with, if you have Toxic. But if they have Safeguard, GG, bro. Um, so there's that. Or like Substitute or some shit uh but yeah i mean rotom heat's good at what it does if you run a little bit more speed you can outspeed rillaboom and also check that thing which is nice nasty plot is still the number one set um but i like toxic a lot as well yeah this thing is very good though this thing being at 23 usage kind of sucks i think it's still really really good and better than a lot of this shit i feel like it's one of those mods that can single-handedly win games on its own like you guys know me i love rotom heat so this is the toxic pain split set um 
and then what is this one this one's also toxic so a lot of people like toxic just because it's nice to chip things down but this is the nasty plot set discharge instead of volt switch on this one this set is just very very good at sweeping nasty plot rotom always can just do the shit on its own i feel like um so i i'm a really big fan of it i think it's better than a lot of these guys in 16 through 20 but hey i guess the latter disagrees so that's that skarm 24th yeah skarm's good good at putting up spikes um body press it's pretty nice for extra drill Fox up extra drill and Rillaboom, which is cool. It's good at getting roll wins out too, because it's impossible to win a KO Skarm with a physical move. Um, so yeah, I, I can't complain too much. Skarm's decent. I'd say it's like the same shit as Corv to me. Mew at 25. I don't even know what people run on Mew. I've seen some with like Meteor Beam. I've seen some with like Taunt Lead. I run a lot of Taunt Lead. Uh, I think it's great as a Taunt Lead. I think it's pretty easy to get up Stealth Rock and Spikes. Uh, but a lot of people are adapting, running stuff like Hatterene, the Influx of Heavy Duty Boots. Um, I don't know, people don't like Mew as much. I don't know how defensive Mew would work, but I feel like it's ass with Clefable around, so, yeah. 26 Tang. Tang's good. You guys have seen me using Tang. I use Helmet a lot. You gotta run these. You basically gotta run this set, or you run Stun Powder over Sleep Powder, but... Or Stun Spore, I mean. But yeah, this is what you need. You gotta have Sludge Bomb to hit the other Rillabooms and Tang Roads. And then Knock Off Giga Drain is just the classic shit. Fantastic Mon. Does great. I think Amoongus is better, but it's still great. Hydreigon 27th is rough, man. That's really rough. I don't understand how that happened. It's, it's a fantastic mon. Maybe people aren't intimidated by Blissey. I'd like to try out a mixed set soon with Hydreigon. I want to try out Flash Cannon, Superpower, uh, Dark Pulse, Draco Meteor. That shit sounds powerful. But you're walled by core, but you just flinch core, so whatever. But you gotta have Flash Cannon for the clefts. And you got a Superpower to get rid of uh, Bliss. Um, but that's my new genius. Either way, fuck that. Just run Nasty Plot and start dropping Dracos. Like, Hydreigon's always been good. 27th is pretty insulting for this mon. It's an, it's an insane mon. Nobody runs into Hydreigon and is like, oh, whatever, I'm not afraid. That shit's a threat. Unless it's Scarf, because that's pussy, but whatever. Hydreigon should have more usage, but hey, I guess right now the metagame is not as, uh, as, like, rewarding for it. And I mean, I get it, Clef at the top. Dragapult Zero Aura are great checks to it, but, I mean, again, it's very hard to switch into this guy if you play right, so... I'm pretty confused by that. It's definitely better than shit like Mew and Tang. But whatever. Toxtricity at number 28. So yeah, this thing went from a UU to OU as we saw earlier. UU to OU for this guy. So that's basically because it's good at taking on these balance teams and these stall teams. It's good at switching into Blissey because Blissey can't Toxic or Thunder Wave. It. Shift Gear is a pretty good set. Um, it's very hard to deal with, I would say. For sure. I mean, I've had some wins with it. I have like a couple of Toxtricity teams, in fact, from Storm Zone. Um, so this is the one he was running overdrive boom burst shift gear drain punch um, And then drain punch again is just there to deal with blissey and stuff uh, But toxicity is so frail like it's so disgustingly frail that every move kills it Which is kind of shitty like 75 70 70 is awful like it dies to like bisharp knockoff at full and stuff like that Like it's it's bulk is just so non-existent um, Which is quite frustrating, but again, it is it is pretty good You guys know how hard it is to switch into that specs boom burst like or whatever, leaving life or boom burst, your resists get to it KO'd, so what can you do? Um, but yeah, Toxtricity is very strong, good nuke. Underrated quality is it can also 1v10 aura, which is pretty nice. Uh, but again, it's slow and frail, so there's a reason it's 28th in usage, and it's probably going to go back to UU at some point. Pelipper 29th, I only fear this thing when it specs. Otherwise, that shit's ass, because it's just on a rain team. I mean, rain's tough, but rain has gotten limited lately. I haven't seen rain as much. You gotta run it with uh, a lot of different stuff. But it's right next to Urshifu, and these guys are usually together. Urshifu, uh, water type, plus what's it called? Pelipper. I have the only one team with the water one, and it's this. Uh, no, not this one. Oops. Where is it? It's the. Uh, where is it, bro? Right here. I have this one, and this one's banded, and then I have one where it's just Scarf Under Rain, which is the same set, but you turn over Thunder Punch. Yeah, this set's pretty good. I mean. This is a tough mod to deal with, no doubt. It's not as good as the Dark one, of course, but it's still pretty good, nonetheless. Yeah, it's good with Pelipper. I mean, there's nothing else to say. It only runs its Bandit or Scarf set. I don't really see Bulk Up or nothing like that. Bulk Up could be decent. I lost to a Bulk Up set before. The guy had Sticky Web, and he was like, Bulk Up, uh, Zen Headbutt or some bullshit for the packs. It was pretty clean. But yeah, Urshifu Water one's pretty good. It's just that the rest of the guys are better, plus this thing's weak to Rillaboom, so it's like... LOL. But Surging Strikes is underrated. It's underrated. Uh, the the multi-hit crit always move. 
just be careful of rocky helmets and all that which every mod runs that's another thing i don't like about this mod every single thing runs rocky helmet so it's like why not just sack your thing to like basically kill this thing if it has rocky helmet so i mean if it's using surging strike which hits three times and every grass type runs helmet so you basically can never click surging strikes which kind of sucks hatterene at 31 i've been decently impressed with hatterene as i've been using it a lot on that ctc hyperstall team i just run calm on three attacks i don't run anything else it's just good at like annoying stuff draining kiss is a cheap move that recovers too much hp for its own good i'm satisfied with that mod got nothing else to say it's good as hell um it does its job it's like one of those mods that sometimes will sweep straight up or it'll be like completely useless which is a pretty pathetic type of mon i hate that type of mon because it's like a complete gamble but i have been appreciating it i have been appreciating it lately so that's all i can say that's all i can say Shout out to Hatterene. He's actually, he's, he's been decent. He's been decent. Um, okay. Let's see. Let's see, let's see. Who's next? Ditto. Ditto at 32. Yeah, this shit's whack. People just use it on stall to counter all the powerful setup sweepers and shit. But some, some mons Ditto can't even beat in reverse. Like, it loses to Roost Volk. It loses to Rillaboom and shit like that. So, it's cool. It's whatever. It's really good on stall, though. I think on stall, it's very hard to defeat. And I think all stalls should run it. That's all I can say about Ditto. Premier at 33. So I used to be a big Premier and a hater when I'd run terrible specs. But I'm very, very satisfied with my use of Subcom Mind recently. That thing has always put in work for me. Even versus Pex teams, I'm still able to fish it out sometimes. And you guys have seen me use Premier in a quite a bit. I just think it's a good glue. I love its natural... Okay, not this Scald Moonblast set. This shit is trash. But, um... The, uh... The Calm Mind set, dude. Where is that shit? Where is... Yeah, this one. Yeah, this is... I love this set. It's been putting in a lot of work. It's just very hard to one-hit KO. Scald burns shit. It's very easy to sweep. Like, this team, for example, would get swept by a Primarina. Easily. This team. Easily would get swept by a Primarina. Because that Tang would get burned by Scald, and then get, uh, Draining Kiss would just murk it, because it's Spadef. Um, you'd have to get off a Toxic or something, but I think I could easily murk this team with Primarina, for example, if I played it well. But yeah, same could be said though for shit like like a Rotom Heat versus this, but either way, yeah. Um, Necrozma 34. People use Necrozma because they like that rocker. That's it. Anyone running that uh, autonomized setup shit is fooling themselves and using a garbage, unnecessary setup sweeper. You're fooling yourself if you want to set up Necrozma. Waste of time. That Meteor Beam Stealth Rock set is actually pretty good, I think. Um, but it's still pretty shit. Like Extra Drill's better, so I don't really use Necrozma like that except on that team. Aegislash at 35. This is a bit surprising because I think Aegislash is insane still. Uh, but it makes sense with Urshifu and stuff limiting it. Dragapult, Excadrill, Hippo, and Mandibuzz being so high in usage. Specs, which was its best set, gets cock blocked by Blissey now. So you've got to run CC. Um, mixed isn't as good because you're still walled by uh, Mandibuzz and Hippo. I think Specs is great, but again, it's tough when everyone's running Blissey and shit. So a lot of trade offs with this thing. It's definitely falling off. 35th is really sad for Aegislash hope it doesn't go to UU. Um, damn. Zam at 36. This is, no one uses Zam anymore, which is kind of weird. I mean, it's still good, but I think it's only good in, in DD Psychic Terrain. Otherwise, I don't see the point of running it. So I can understand why I fell off. It's not that good. Like, it's just hard. You got to run Focus Sash, and then plus two still can't kill shit. So it's like, what's the point? Um, and then everything has priority as well. So if you're not running Focus Sash, you're just going to die. Uh, Titar at 38 went up from uu yeah it's just good anti-offense it's good at limiting dragapult i can totally respect that it's good at limiting togekiss good at limiting volk um it's good at putting up rocks so i actually i fuck with tatar right now it's fun and then gengar at 39 so the only gengars i've run are sash and then the subset um it's all right dragapult's way better and age slash is also better it's pretty hard to justify using gengar but it can be fun at times. Cursed Body is extremely good too. I think some interesting things I noted from this is that Cloister is just not here. Um, I guess like nobody cares about Cloister anymore. That shit fell off. We can look at a lot of these guys who fell off. Kingdra, gone. Venusaur, gone. Torkoal, gone. Mag, gone, obviously. Jirachi didn't make the cut. Bisharp, surprisingly, didn't make the cut. Chansey didn't make the cut because people like Blissey more. Marowak, Alola, I didn't expect that shit too. But then you see the other like more niche mods that people use, like Rhyperior, which is not bad. Charizard, which I think isn't good. Gastron, which is okay. Mantine, which I think is pretty good actually. Conk, which I think is ass. Uh, Diggersby and Cloyster, I think are great. Mammoth one, I think is pretty decent. 
you see like the Darm, the Terex, the Skull, the Pete. You guys know if you run into like the High Ladder, you always see people running these clown ass mons. But yeah, um, that's basically it. Let's see. I mean, I think OU is kind of dry right now. I think the fat shit is too good. Regen and heavy duty boots make this shit really, really annoying. But um, I think the November metagame with the Isle of Armor will definitely help out quite a bit in like i guess the shifts of the metagame right now it's kind of dry i won't lie ou is definitely in a dry as a uh, dry as hell place but like i liked going over this i liked seeing it if we go through the viability rankings i can kind of match it up to that i'd say like this makes sense i still think dragapult should be in its own rank and then zero aura probably like below that in its own rank but that makes sense a rank uh okay i mean the usage stats don't really match up with the uh stats like hydreigon is 27th but it's in fucking a rank so it's one of the top 10 pokemon basically maybe but yeah you see other shit here like alakazam's and b a minus rank despite being all the way down on usage i still think zam's not that good but yeah like rain teams like kingdra quagsire so you miss some stuff when you don't go through this you can see that the viability of these mons isn't always hand in hand with the usage but there's some stuff i don't think is good like bear scooter for example i don't think bear scooter rains are that good Shit like Dracozolt is always like, sometimes it works, but it's like a gamble. Like, oh, I hope I don't run into a hippo. Oh, great. I didn't run into a hippo. Now my Dracozolt's my Draco crazy. Um, Snorlax, for example, can beat Stall. So, I like that they got rid of shit below C rank. They're not even entertaining it anymore. That's cool. Slowbro Galler. That thing is pretty good. That thing is pretty good, I won't lie. But the tier is interesting right now. Um, a lot of polarizing teams. A lot of stuff to check, so it's very hard to make a perfect team. A lot of stall, a lot of offense, but we'll see where it goes from that. I like making this video. Let me know what you guys thought in below, in the comments below. Tell me what you guys think for the OU tier, what you guys hope is next. Leave a like for sure. Subscribe, stream later today. Check out the Brave Browser, all that good shit. I'll see you guys soon. Peace.